Hey guys, Matt here today with Built Right Industries. Um, I'm working on a revision to the rear seat release right now um, for the F-150 Super Crew and now Super Cab um, after 2015. Um, and I thought I would kind of show you guys what um, the other latch looks like. So most of your trucks have a latch that looks like this. Um, and mine included and the difference is if you see this pin it's got a nice round pin so that is what um, interfaces with the built right rear seat release like so right so that works great the problem that we're running into is that some people have a latch that looks like this and it's got a little strap on it already, and you might be tempted to say, um, okay, well, if you've got the strap already, why do you need the rear seat release? And I'm going to show you why. Um, when you pull the latch, this mechanism swings up. It doesn't just move in a, in a linear motion. And so this latch, by default, I've got this tripped here as though it's latched. Um, this latch, by default, is, uh, the strap is horizontal. Everything looks great, right? But when you consider the fact that there's not a lot of space between here and the back of the cab wall, you can really just grab a finger on there, maybe. And then if you pull straight back, it's actually it's actually sort of difficult to get it to latch because what you need to be able to do is pull back and into the seat. Um, but that's an action that's much harder to do when the seat back is folded up. So, um, and what, what it is is this little plastic strap here that slips onto this pin and this pin is um, a square so what some people have done um, really creatively and I, and I was aware that there was two different latches um, what some people have done is slip the open part of the built right industries um, strap just like that and then install a black piece as you would normally and it actually works pretty well um, pretty well is not really my style so we started thinking about a way <clears throat> that we might be able to replace this with uh, the built right kit and hopefully we can do it by just revising our current kit as to not offer two so I dreamed up this idea this is kind of old school but uh, sometimes paper and paper and scissors work pretty well <clears throat> my thought was that if we have these two overlapping circles the larger circle could grab that square and would allow it to spin um, so that we don't have the problem that we have with this strap where you have to be pulling in an arc. And that the smaller circle would still be, um, it's not, this is not just a keyhole. The smaller circle comes back around so that it's not sliding in and out of the pin. And I'll show you what I mean. My concern is that I didn't want to compromise the original design. so. What we've got now is, so this is the piece that I had at uh, water jet cut. It's pretty slick. So that'll slip on there just the same way and uh, it won't slip off, right? So that looks like that works pretty well. <clears throat> if we spin you around here and we install it on that square piece, we see the same sort of thing. Now what we have is of course we've got the built right strap and, uh, and support bracket, but you have the ability um, of this to rotate so that we can get a good angle and pull it just like that. So given that I've now sort of tested that this actually fits and was cut to, to uh, my tolerances, I think I'm going to go sew a strap onto this and we'll install the kit along with this latch and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we're in my basement now, slash Built Right Industries HQ. What I'm going to show you here is uh, maybe come a piece of Built Right history. This is my 1954, I believe is the year, Singer 404. Um, this is the machine 
that I sewed the first mm, probably 300 straps, 400 straps with. Um, it's nice and small and portable. The reason you want to use an old machine like this for um, tactical equipment or webbing, that sort of thing, is that this thing is built like a, uh, like a tank, so has no trouble punching through the webbing, which is what we use. So I'm going to get this uh, hooked up here and we'll get sewing. Okay, so <clears throat> not my finest work, but for the for a quick uh, quick and dirty prototype, that's gonna work really well. So let's go check this out uh, on the car. All right, so we're back in the car. We've got our prototype strap here. We got the actually uh, the original latch and. Uh, bracket that I've had just have installed in my car for normal use. We'll go ahead and this out of there. Let's see how close we got with my eyeballing the uh, strap length. Pretty dang close. I've done a few of those. All right, so we'll set this strap aside. This is our version one, we'll call it uh, strap. And we've got this strap and the bracket that we'll install it with. We'll go and uh, fish this through here. And then we will remove this latch. One of the interesting things that I found is that the screws are harder to get in when you're installing this latch. And I think what it is, is the latch, this particular latch seems to be manufactured with really not a lot of tolerance where it comes to the fit. It seems like maybe this tab isn't quite bent sufficiently enough and it makes um, the fit between this hole and this hole, the spacing there, uh, kind of tough to achieve properly. So anyway, so here's our latch with the square pin. Now we'll go ahead and we'll install our new prototype. I almost went and installed it how other people are doing now. Okay, so we got that in place. We'll replace our T30 screws. That one started. Install this one, snug it down. Yeah, it's getting kind of tight there again. You know, some of you are reported having to use a socket and um, ratchet to install this and get your stock latch out. That could be the reason, is if you have a latch just from a run where the tolerance is really tight between the latch and the seat. Okay, so we'll get everything else off here. Now we've got our black bracket. This is just the same as all of our production brackets. We've got our strap in here. Well, that really seems like that's going to work pretty well.
Now what I'm running into is that there's a little bit of a plastic right here that the latch is running into. It's not actually creating a problem, it's just kind of kicking it up out of the way. Might be able to get you an even better view of that. So that would be when you relatch it. Um, I've got this black bracket spaced off as much so that there's plenty of wiggle room here. Um, so that's not creating any issues. So I think we're probably going to go with this. It seems to actually work really well. Um, once these brackets are tumbled, it'll take some of the edge off of this. And it'll probably work a little bit better even. Um, so that is uh, walks you through a revision to the Built Right Industries rear seat release. Um, hopefully this will help accommodate some of you Super Crew owners. It seems like the square peg is more common on the Super Crew, or excuse me, the Super Cab. Um, we'll continue doing research. I've got some feelers out to Ford to try and identify which trucks exactly have that style uh, strap, or uh, the little black strap and the style latch, but uh, nothing, uh, no answers yet. So we will keep you informed. Thanks, guys.